English class. I hope you had a great Children's Day yesterday. We are talking about our kinds of sentences. We've learned three types, and today we're going to learn the fourth type. All right, so our three types that we've already learned are, can you name them? All right, now let me tell you what they are. Hopefully you name them all out loud. Declarative, interrogative, exclamatory. If you got them all, give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. Remember, a declarative makes a statement, ends with a period. Interrogative asks a question and ends with a question mark. An exclamatory shows sudden or strong feeling and ends with an exclamation point. Now we're talking about our fourth and final type of sentence. That is the imperative sentence. Imperative. Let's say, spell say, imperative. Imperative. I-M-P-E-R-A-T-I-V-E. Imperative. This kind of sentence gives a command and usually ends with a period. So it gives a command and usually ends with a period. Sometimes it does not. Sometimes it ends with an exclamation point because it's showing strong feeling in the command. But right now we're just going to look at ones that end with a period. So look at this example. Hand me that book, please. That's a command. You're telling someone to do something. It's not an option. You're being polite by saying please, having good modales by saying please, por favor, but it is a command. They have to do it. So hand me that book, please. It also starts with a capital letter and ends with a period. Every sentence starts with a capital letter and has ending punctuation. Here's another example. Close the door. It's a command. That's something, for example, your mom might say. When you come in from outside, maybe they don't want bugs or anything to come inside, so your mom will tell you, close the door. That's imperative. It's a command. You have to do that. It's not a question. They're telling you, close the door. Capital letter, period. All right, you should have pages seven. Looks like this with the wolf that's howling at the moon. And then on the back, we're going to also do the back today. So pages seven and eight in front of you. If you don't have them, go ahead and pause your video and get that now. We're going to go over the first couple for each exercise. So think A. The directions say, identify each sentence by writing X, EXC for exclamatory or IMP for imperative in the blank. Use proofreader's marks, and it shows you the caret symbol, to add correct punctuation to the end of each sentence. Number one. Hey, I just found a huge book about nocturnal animals. Which is this? Is this exclamatory, showing sudden or strong feeling? Or is this imperative, telling someone to do something? That's right, it's exclamatory, showing sudden strong feeling about finding this book. So you should write in the blank E X C for exclamatory. This is think A. All right, but we're not done. We now need to put the correct punctuation. So at the end of the sentence, you need to put the caret mark because we're about to insert the punctuation. What punctuation do we use for exclamatory? That's right, an exclamation point. Very good. So that's what you should have at the end of your sentence. Let's go to number two. Help me carry it to the table. Help me carry it to the table. Which one is this, exclamatory or imperative? It's imperative because it's giving a command, telling someone to do something carry it to the table. So IMP for imperative, 
Now at the end of the sentence, we'll put our carrot. And what punctuation? Good, a period. Excellent job. All right, we're going to move on now to think B. Think B. In this one, you're doing the exact same process, except you have more options. Declarative, interrogative, exclamatory, or imperative. For think B. And then you need to put the three lines under the letter that needs to be capitalized, and you need to add the punctuation at the end. They've already done number one for you, but let's do it together. Number one, read these facts about gray wolves. So this is imperative because it's giving a command, telling you to read the facts. So imperative goes in the blank. Read has to have the three lines under R because it's the first word and needs to be capitalized. Since it's imperative and not showing strong, sudden feeling, we put a period at the end above our carrot. Okay, let's do number two together and then you can do the rest after the video is done. Do you know that gray wolves once lived in most of North America? Do you know that gray wolves once lived in most of North America? What is that? It's interrogative, right? Because it's asking a question, asking if you know something. So interrogative in the blank. What letter should be capitalized? That's right, the D in do. So you need to put three little lines under the D in do. At the end of the sentence, what goes, what punctuation should go there? Good, a question mark because your sentence is interrogative. All right, and you can finish that exercise now on your own. Let's look at the directions for write C. Pretend that you are visiting Yellowstone National Park. As you drive through the park with your family, you see a pack of gray wolves. Write an imperative sentence you might say to your brother as you try to see the wolves better. Write an exclamatory sentence that shows a strong feeling you have about seeing the wolves. So in this, you want to pensar that you are visitando Yellowstone National Park. Su familia está manejando through the park con, um, y usted vio una familia de gray wolves. Escribir an imperative sentence that usted puede decir to su, a su hermano as usted is trying, uh, intentando a ver los wolves mejor. Write, escribir, an exclamatory sentence that shows strong feeling. Sus um, pensamientos que son fuertes, su, um, I don't know the word for feeling, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to go with pensamientos that are fuerte. Um, that you have about viendo los wolves. Okay, turn the page. Think A on page 8 says rewrite, so escribir de nuevo, cada oración con the correct capitalization and punctuation. So each one is a sentence, but you need to write it again, escribir de nuevo, with the first letter capitalized and a period, question mark, or exclamation point. You have to decide which one you need at the end. So number one, a barn owl is also a nocturnal creature. What letter should be capitalized? A, right, because it starts the sentence. So capitalize A. And then what punctuation do you need at the end? Excellent, a period, because it's just a declarative sentence. Now do the rest of those. Okay, think B. This is a special challenge, okay? You need to read each paragraph. Use proofreader's marks to mark which letters need capitalization and to add punctuation that is missing. Okay, we are going to go through this together. Ready? Okay. Barn owls make their nests in many different kinds of places. Barn owls are not picky about their nest sites. A nest might be in a hollow tree or high in a farmer's barn. 
Do you know how many eggs a mother owl lays in her nest? She may lay up to 18 eggs. What a lot of baby owls. The eggs in the nest are called a clutch. The father owl brings food to the mother owl. Any extra food is saved to feed the babies when they hatch. What are baby owls called? They are called owlets and look like fluffy white balls. They are so cute. The owlets will live in the nest for almost two months before they learn how to fly. Don't bother the owl's nest. The father and mother will protect their nest and babies. After many more weeks, the young owls leave the nest to make their own nest. Okay, now let's go back to the beginning of the paragraph. Let's look at the first sentence. Barn owls make their nests in many different kinds of places. What is this missing? It's missing a capital letter at the beginning. You need to capitalize the first letter of the sentence. So barn, the B needs to be capitalized. So put the three little lines under the B in barn. Barn owls are not picky about their nest sites. Do we need to fix anything? No. A nest might be in a hollow tree or in a farmer's barn. Do you know how many eggs a mother owl lays in her nest? She may lay up to 18 eggs. Is that all one sentence? No, we're missing the punctuation. So we need to put a period in between what two words? In between barn and do. So a nest might be in a hollow tree or high in a barn, period. Do you know how many eggs a mother owl lays in her nest? That's one sentence. What kind? interrogative so we need to add a question mark right after nest then we have she may lay up to 18 eggs that one's all good what a lot of baby owls what kind of sentence is that exclamatory so add an exclamation point the eggs in the nest are called a clutch is that one okay yes we don't need to add anything the father owl brings food to the mother owl. How about this sentence? We need to capitalize the, so we need to put three little lines under the letter T in the because it begins the sentence. Any extra food is saved to feed the babies when they hatch. What about this one? We need to capitalize the A in any at the beginning of the sentence. What are baby owls called? What do we need to fix here? That's right, the W in what should be capitalized because it starts our sentence. Our sentence is asking a question, so it needs to end in a question mark. So a question mark right after out, or excuse me, right after called. What are baby owls called? Question mark. They are called owlets and look like fluffy white balls. What should you put after that? Good, a period, because that's a declarative sentence. They are so cute. What goes after cute? Good, an exclamation point. The owlets will live in the nest for almost two months before they learn how to fly. Do we need to fix anything? Yes, we need to capitalize the the before owlets, because it starts the sentence. Don't bother the owl's nest. We need to capitalize the D and don't, so three little lines. What kind of sentence is this? It is imperative because it's telling, it's commanding, do not touch something, no tocar, so it's imperative. So we put a period at the end. So that's right after the owl's nest, period. The father and mother owl will protect their nest and babies. What do we need to fix here? That's right, capitalize the, right before the father, because it starts our sentence. After many more weeks, the young owls leave the nest to make their own nests. What do we need to fix here? That's right, capitalize the A in after, because it starts the sentence. Okay, now the last part you're going to do on your own, but let me explain what you're doing. You need to, add, you need to figure out how many of each type of sentence did you read. So count your declarative sentences and write the number next to the, 
next to where it says declarative sentences. The exclamatory sentences, then the interrogative sentences, then the imperative sentences. Under that it says, in a well-written paragraph, most of the sentences are blank sentences. So which kind of sentences? Declarative, exclamatory, interrogative, or imperative? Which one of the four? The way to know is look at the number of sentences that you read. Which one has the most? That's the one that goes in the blank. Okay, have fun. Let me know if you have any questions about how to finish your paper. Love you guys and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.